Hey, hey, Joe Bob Chamberman here. Welcome to Joe Bob Chamberman TV. Today we're gonna do something a little different. I've been doing a lot of camper build videos, but I wanted to do something a little different today. So today we're gonna do something about one of America's favorite fair foods. I know you have all seen it. It's every fair you go to in America, there is a corn dog. Of course, there's all sorts of variations of that corn dog nowadays, but the basic stick in a wiener covered in cornmeal batter is always there and then deep fried. So I thought it'd be interesting to do a little episode on the history of the corn dog. It is my absolute favorite when I go to a fair. It's the first thing I go for. I love it. We just had the Apple Fest here in Murfreesboro and uh, the DuCoin State Fair and that's kind of what made me want to do this. Let's get into it. The history of the corn dog is a bit murky with several different vendors claiming to have invented it. Um, however, it is clear that the corn dog originated in the United States in the early 1900s. One of the earliest claims to the invention of the corn dog comes from Stanley Jenkins of Buffalo, New York. He uh, filed a patent for an apparatus for preparing food products in 1927. The present invention relates to cooking vessels and more particularly an apparatus in which a new, novel, edible food product may be deep fried. I've discovered that articles of food such as, for instance, wieners, boiled ham, boiled eggs, cheese, sliced peaches, pineapples, bananas, and like fruit, cherries, dates, figs, strawberries, etc. when impaled on sticks and dipped in batter, then deep fried, result in a wholesome and tasty refreshment. Jenkins' device allowed for a variety of foods, including hot dogs, to be dipped in batter and deep fried on a stick. In the early 1940s, several vendors began selling corn dogs at state fairs and carnivals. One of the most famous of these vendors was Carl Fletcher, who sold corny dogs at the State Fair of Texas, which I am from Texas. I grew up going to the State Fair of Texas, and I do remember corny dogs. I remember growing up calling them corny dogs. I didn't actually start calling them corn dogs still recently I remember I didn't even think about it till I read this but but yeah I grew up calling corn dogs corny dogs it took Neil and Skip Fletcher 12 years to perfect the batter and how it was mixed and it has never changed I mean of course there have been variations of the corn dog like I was saying earlier but the corny dog itself their recipe hasn't changed in over 80 years a resolution was passed in the Texas State Senate recognizing Neil as the inventor of the corny dog Another early corn dog vendor was Pronto Pup of Rockaway Beach, Oregon. Around the same time Neil and Skip were cornering the food vending market down south, George and Versa Boyington were selling what they called a Pronto Pup to thousands of hungry Oregonians. Pronto Pups are made with pancake batter, giving them a less sweet flavor as opposed to cornbread batter, which has a much sweeter taste. In 1941, at the Pacific International Livestock Exhibit, George and Versa sold over 15,000 Pronto Pups. George, a former hot dog vendor, came up with the idea for the Pronto Pup after losing his whole stock of hot dog buns in a rainstorm. As he sat there feeding the buns to the seagulls, he came up with a way to cook the buns as needed. In 1946, Ed Waldmeyer and Don Strand opened Cozy Dog Drive-In in Springfield, Illinois. Cozy Dog got its start at the Amarillo Airfield in Texas. Don Strand, who actually developed the technique and batter used to make Cozy Dogs. He sent Ed the mix and instructions for how to prepare his new invention so they could test it out. Originally called the Krusty Kerr, the future Cozy Dog became very popular with the servicemen at the airbase. Thousands of them were sold, prompting them to open up Cozy Dogs in Springfield, Illinois on June 16, 1946. The first corn dogs were sold for 10 cents. In 1964, the corn dog was featured in the World's Fair in New York City. In 1976, the corn dog was featured in the movie Rocky. A line of maple scented corn dog related jewelry is available for purchase. And the Texas State Fair sells 630,000 corn dogs during their 24 day season every year. It's 24 days. That's a lot of corn dogs in 24 days. Corn dogs quickly became a popular snack food and you can find them at state fairs, the grocery stores, carnivals, sporting events, just all over America. Today, the corn dog is a classic American snack food that is enjoyed by people of all ages. It is a simple but delicious treat that is perfect for any occasion. 
That right there is the history of the corn dog. I didn't know all this about the corn dog. I just knew that I loved it and it's very good and I see it everywhere. You know, it's even all over the world. In Australia, they call them Pluto pups, dogwood dogs, dippy dogs. In Canada, of course, they're called corn dogs in most provinces, but New Brunswick, Ontario, and Quebec, they call them pogos. In France, I can't say what, you know, they call it, but it literally translates to sausage donut Japan, the literal translation is American dog. In Korean, it's uh, translated to hot dog, which actually causes confusion for Americans when they go down there and they're trying to order it in Korean because it's called a hot dog and it's also a corn dog. I can see how that caused confusion. And in South Africa, they call them Yankees. So yeah, they're, they're worldwide. They have a worldwide status. Well, the corn dog has grown into this huge, big deal all over the world. Everybody loves them. And I mean, what's not to love? It's a quick, easy snack, you know, and it's tasty. Apparently, you can get them sweet, which is the way I've seen most of them. Or up north in, in Oregon, they make them a little more savory. I'm, I'm going to be real interested to go and try one of those. That's going to be have to be a stop, you know, when I'm traveling is going to a Pronto Pups. In fact, I'll probably be going to all these corn dog places you know when I'm out there on the road living in my camper there's there's no doubt in my mind these are the kind of things I want to do go stop and, and eat the local famous foods and you know stop at those first of restaurants and, and everything I, I just I want to see things and I want to live and I feel like that's how you that's how I can do that I hope you enjoyed this I, I know I did I had fun making it I had fun researching corn dogs I got very very hungry but luckily like I said the fair's in town so I was able to go get a corn dog today yay me Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or not. It's up to you. Do what you want to do. Just make sure you do one thing, though. You don't have to do any of that, but you should. Try to be kind to somebody today. Just remember that a kind word can change somebody's day. Same thing as a negative word. You could be negative to somebody, and that could just ruin their day, too. And also, it takes a lot of work to be angry and negative, so... And you'll feel better. I know I do. When I'm nice to people, I feel a lot better than when I'm mean or angry. Because then I get angry, I, I always regret, and I, I dwell on things, and, and when I'm happy and nice, it's never a problem. I don't have anything to feel bad about, so it feels good. Like, subscribe, comment, or not. I'll see you guys next week. Joe Bob Chamberman out.